Okay, we're going to look at velocity, which is 7.2 in your book. We have a question here. It says, Judy and her friend Helen live on opposite sides of a river that is a kilometer wide. Helen lives two kilometers downstream from Judy on the opposite side of the river. Judy can swim at a rate of three kilometers an hour, and the river's current has a speed of four kilometers an hour. Judy swims from her cottage directly across the river. Okay, so let's get a diagram. Whenever we have a word problem, let's try to get a diagram that will help us out with this question. So we have our river here. Well, here's our river. And we'll say this is Judy. She's across the river. She's very happy. Okay. And her friend lives two kilometers. Her friend lives two kilometers downstream from her. So we're going to draw a horizontal line across this river. This is where Judy lives. And then two kilometers downstream, so that's the way the current's going. That's what downstream means. It's her friend's house. It's a lovely house. Okay? It only has a door, no windows. So this distance here, according to our question, is two kilometers in length. Um, it says, as we go up, the river is one kilometer wide. So the width of our river is an entire kilometer wide. It also says Judy can swim at a rate of three kilometers an hour. And Judy swims from her cottage directly across the river. So she follows this dotted line. The only problem is that the river has a current to it. And the current of the river, do it in blue, goes at a speed of four kilometers an hour. Okay? So there's a whole lot of measurements here. She swims at a speed of three kilometers an hour. So let's really take a look of everything we've done here, okay? The idea here is Judy's going to swim directly across this river, okay? She swims at three kilometers an hour, and the current, so her vector, is going to be completely horizontal. You could say, if we were looking at it like this, this being east and north, she's swimming east across the river. Downstream, which is the way the river runs, is her friend's house she's trying to get to. But the river's current is four kilometers an hour. So the current is faster than her actual speed. So it's going to affect her projection. Okay? Essentially what's going to happen is we're going to have a resultant vector. We'll do in red here. We have to figure out what the resultant of Judy's swim is going to be because the river is going to push her downstream. Okay? So this four kilometers we can move down because we know that that is attached to this part of the river. So we've now created a right angle triangle. Assuming this river is flush, okay, and that's the assumption we actually have to make, that this is creates a 90 degree angle, which means we need to figure out, what is the actual question? What is Judy's result in velocity? Okay, so we need to find out her new velocity, which will be the speed coming across the river. So with the help of the river or the hindrance, we'll find out what her new speed is. So using this information, because this is just a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras' theorem. We have our c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c is equal to the root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 16 and 9, root 25. Is that right? Five. Whatever that is. Five. <laughs> yes, it's 5. So she swims at a new speed of 5 kilometers an hour. So the river has helped her. Okay. The river has helped her in her um, swim across the river. But the only problem here is, okay, according to this, Judy lives two kilometers down the street. Okay, now the only problem is that Ju the, uh, the river is only a kilometer in width. Okay, so we have to scale this using similar triangles. Because this is a much larger triangle, we have to make a new scale. Okay? Our velocity was three kilometers an hour, but we only actually have to get one kilometer. So using a similar triangle, okay, this only being one kilometer, we'll move this one kilometer over. So this is the idea that this is our new river, this being one kilometer. This took us three kilometers, this took us four kilometers. Okay? Using the scale, it looks like we have to divide the larger of our triangles by a factor of three to scale it down to one kilometer. Okay? So because our velocity was 3 kilometers and we're only looking for a distance of 1, we have to divide each 
of the other side of the triangle by 3. So over here, we have 4 divided by 3. So we have 4 over 3 kilometers is the distance she gets. And 5 over 3 kilometers is the new distance she gets. Okay? So those actual distances, using our calculator here, yeah? Why is it 4 over 3 and not 3? It's 4 over 3 because that's the velocity of the river. You're right, her friend is only 2 kilometers away, and we're going to figure out how far away she is from her friend. Okay, so I know that looks a little confusing with the 4 and the 2. Let's, we kind of scaled it before. Let's just assume, uh, I want to move the house. Maybe the house was down here and this was a total of 2 kilometers, okay? I know I put them as the same scale. They weren't quite perfect. Okay. So maybe it's all the way down here and that's how far she gets. So it turns out that 4 over 3 in terms of kilometers here, she got 1.333 kilometers away or sorry, downstream. So she traveled 1.3 repeated, or 4 over 3 kilometers downstream, which means she's approximately, okay, approximately 0.7 kilometers away from her friend's house, because her friend is still 2 kilometers down river. And the distance she swam, due to the help of the river and the angle she ended up swimming on, divided by 3, is 1.6. Okay. So she swam roughly 1.6 kilometers downstream. How far away from Helen's College would you be when she reaches the other side? Yeah, she's still 0.7 kilometers, so 700 meters away. Okay, so to add to this question, let's say there's a bit of a different circumstance. This time, she decided to walk so that she would be directly across the river from her friend's house. So there's her friend's house. There's Judy. All other things the same. She needs to swim directly across the river in this case. Now we know that she can only swim at 3 kilometers an hour, and we also know that the river still has a current of 4 kilometers an hour. Which means in order for her to end up directly across, so swimming in a straight line, she's actually going to have to angle herself. Because the current of the river is going to affect her final point. So in this case, yeah, go ahead. Okay. That angle, that shape is going to be the same one as the Ah, let's find out. Angle. We're going to find that out right now. Okay. So her result, and she's going to have to swim on an angle. Essentially, assuming that's north, north of the house so that she ends up at the house. The problem is, though, what's the speed of Judy? What speed can she swim at? She only swims at three kilometers an hour. So even if she's swimming this direction, she only does it at 3 kilometers an hour, okay? We know that the, res the river has a current of 4 kilometers an hour. So her new speed is going to change. Will it be faster or slower? It's going to be slower because she's swimming into the river, okay? Which means that this angle and this are going to be a little different, okay? There won't be much difference, but there will be difference between them. So let's say the question is asking us what her new speed is and at what angle she has to swim. Well, we know that this is, again, 90 D. We can use Pythagorean's theorem again. This time, oh, we have a bit of an issue here. This is an impossibility with her thing, OK? Now, the reason this is an impossibility with a triangle, you can never have a horizontal. Um, essentially, what this is saying, I didn't think of this before I made the question, but this is going to be ran at this broad, uh, problem. Because she can only swim three kilometers an hour, the current, if she starts horizontal, will have to push her beyond the house. It's impossible for her to swim at this directly across. Okay? The idea being that a triangle can never have a hypotenuse shorter than any of its other sides. So I do have to manipulate the question a little. Okay? So we're going to manipulate the question so that we can solve it in this sense. Let's say the speed of the river slowed down a little. And it's now only two kilometers an hour. So at 2 kilometers an hour, we use the same idea. We have our 3 squared. This time, subtract 2 squared is going to be equal to our new, uh, we'll call it a, our new vector a, okay, is a squared. And this is just Pythagorean's theorem spun around. So this will be 9 uh, minus 4. So we're looking at root 5 as our a. So her new speed is root 5 kilometers an hour, which is? 2.2? All right, I like that. Approximately 2.2 kilometers an hour. 
Yeah. We've discovered our speed at 2.2 kilometers an hour. We need to figure out what angle relative to the horizontal swimming she'll have to aim at. So, again, you can use your sine law, cosine law. Yeah, we have all three sides. You can use sine law or cosine law to solve this. It's completely up to you guys. In fact, I'll use sine law since you guys seem to be very good with it. Um, sine, this is 90 over 3 is equal to sine theta over 2. So we're going to have sine inverse of 2 times sine 90 divided by 3 will give us our theta. Let's see if we can do that all in one shot here. Somebody got it? 42? Great. That's quite an angle she has to swim at. Okay, so theta equals approximately 42 degrees. So she now has to swim at an angle of 42 degrees. That's quite an angle just to get horizontal to where she was standing before. Uh, entire page.